Hey guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Meet, and um, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at um, well, it's C4D to Unity again, but we're going to be looking at getting uh, joint based animations out of Cinema 4D into Unity. So, joints is basically what um, uh, Max on are calling their bone system. So, I suppose we better get started. I'm going to make a simple setup, I'm just going to create a cone. Uh, I want to see my subdivision, so display ground shading lines and let's make the height of this 6 meters and because we know the, it's uh, at the halfway point there we can move it up so it sits on the floor, so that's 300 there we go um, let's have a look at this object Right, the rotational segments don't need to be that many, so I'm just going to drop that down to 18. Um, the height segments, what did we have before? Let's go 12, just so it's a little bit smoother. Um, now I'm going to go into my uh, front view and zoom out a little bit. And I'm also going to change the display to wireframe so we can actually see the... Uh, wireframe of our of our model I'm going to make that editable and I'm gonna select the joint tool and you'll notice that if you start clicking around first of all you need your object selected um, actually I don't think you do but uh, if you click around in the viewport nothing's gonna happen if you hold control down you'll start creating joints um, but uh, obviously if, if I want to if I zoom down here and I want to create a joint here it's not going to be at the exact place it needs to be so, make, so to make sure that it, it is going to be I'm going to go up to the snap settings turn on snapping and then I'm going to turn on work plane snap and I'm going to turn on grid point so now it will snap to the points of the grid. Okay. Um, if you have got your object selected, um, it'll actually create the joints as uh, children of that uh, object. So let's start off at the bottom here. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to create a joint at every sort of height segment of the cone. So let's do that as we go along. So I'm holding control and clicking where I want my joints to be. And we do that up the entire length of the, uh, the object. Okay. Just gonna zoom in so we can make sure we're on point. So there's our joint chain. If we go back, I'm middle clicking to change my view by the way. Um, we can see that it's right in the center of our object there which is, is exactly what we want so I'm just going to go back into my select tool and select that if we open up the uh, children of our cone now we can see that we've got this root object we don't actually need that so you can right click and I think you can delete without children somewhere here we go delete without children right down the bottom there so it leaves our things here just to make things clear I'm going to I'm going to name our uh, joint one, I'm going to name it start. And joint 13, I'm going to name end. Okay. Jobs are good. Un. So now we've got our bones and our actual polygon object. You can see if I grab the start joint um, and move it, it moves, moves my whole chain, obviously, because all the other joints are children of each other like this hierarchy where joint three is a jo child of joint two joint four is a child of joint three and so on so if i move the start object everything's going to move because they're all children of that but now we've got to actually attach our bones to our mesh so when we move our bones our mesh goes with them so what we do is we select everything um, 
just a few information you can actually select start right click and then say select children and that will select all of them so you can actually do that from the cone if you go to the cone right click select children it will select everything including the cone itself um, then we go up to the character menu at the top here drop that down and then we've got commands and we've got this bind and what that will do is it will create a skin object underneath our um, our actual polygon object and it will create this tag which is our weight tag now for this we don't really need to worry too much but um, if we grab our start object now you can see that when I move move it it moves everything else with it okay now if I was going to animate that start bone I could put a keyframe here go to the end and put another keyframe and then somewhere in the middle you know put it there and then you'd get this but if that's what you were going to be doing with your object you don't need to have bones in it at all you could just keyframe the actual object itself going backwards and forwards so it would be pointless to put bones in an object in that respect so what I'm going to do will need bones so if I click uh, select my start object and um, right click go to character tags and then go to this IK uh, tag it puts it here if we select our I IK tag we can see that we've uh, if you go to the tag tab it's asking for an end what what is this you know so we can actually grab our end and lob it in there and our end is this joint at the top there so uh, let's go back to our IK tag and I'm actually going to make this bone chain dynamic so if you go to the dynamic tag and enable um, it now possesses uh, dynamic qualities so if I now press the play button and grab my oh there you go you can see it already it's uh, got dynamic joints in it it's lost cohesion there cohesion even um, so I'm just going to pause that and take it back to the beginning um, go back to my IK tab um, now we can start affecting some of these properties so if I if I press play on this it's obviously collapsing so maybe put the strength up a bit it's on 30% at the moment I'm gonna put it on 50 see it straightens up a little bit but it um, it kind of starts losing itself and wriggling around so you can actually put it up more if you want to sort of get rid of some of that 75 still having a bit of a jiggle there I'm actually going to put it back down to what it was and play with the position hold strength okay that's not too good we don't want that so maybe 98 percent maybe put our strength up actually 40 40 put this down so it's a bit more of a natural sag now like I said you can play around with these settings for forever I'm gonna put the rotational hold up as well oh yeah that's good so I'm gonna put this back I think put this back as well and, that, and I'm gonna start playing with the rotational hold let's write that up to 35 a bit more stable put the strength up to 45 maybe I wonder if you can No, I think what I'm going to do is actually grab this start joint and rotate it slightly just so it might be because it's straight up in the air it's causing problems so let's put this back down oh, that's already at what it was okay so let's see what happens now okay so yeah it does need a little bit more strength in it I'd say maybe 35 brings it up a little bit 40 okay let's put that down to 35 and the rotational hold will put up a little bit maybe 31 
Yeah, it kind of calms down a little bit. Okay, so we've got we've got something to work with now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to um, just make a simple animation. Um, obviously, if I move this now, it's going to be moving along its x-axis in local space. So I'm going to change it to world space. I'm going to start off our animation somewhere over here. Don't worry about this moving around and whatnot. But I'm going to click my start joint and keyframe its position. And um, let's, let's make the timeline a little bit longer. Okay, so at six seconds, it's back in the same position again. And then I think halfway through, let's get it bang on three seconds. I'm going to have it move over here. Like I said, the animation for the uh, the dynamic stuff isn't isn't really pretty, but that's not the uh, what the point of this tutorial is. So, so okay, so that goes over there, goes over there, and then comes back. I think we could probably have that travel twice actually. So I'm just going to move this keyframe out of the way, and I'm going to select this keyframe and copy it by holding Control and then dragging, and putting that somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah, about there will do. And this keyframe is in the middle of them. I'm going to copy that again. Put that in the middle there. So it should make that journey twice now. Let's get back to the beginning. Oh. It doesn't seem to be doing what I wanted it to do. So let's get rid of all these keyframes. Get back to the beginning. Keyframe there. Again, keyframe at the end. Um, keyframe somewhere in the middle. And then here, we want this object to be over here. We'll keyframe that. And I think we can copy this keyframe now, and hopefully it will. It will sort itself out. There we go. So it moves over, comes back, and then moves over again, and then comes back again. That'll do us. And then let's adjust this IK because it's not particularly pretty. So maybe 40. Bit of wiggling about there. That'll do us. It's pretty interesting to look at, I suppose. So Okay, so that's our animation in cinema. So all I'm going to do now is uh, go to file, save, uh, save as I suppose, and I'm going to save it in my Unity asset folder for my project. Um, if you've watched any of the previous tutorials, I set up a project folder called Cinema 4D Test. It had an asset, asset folder in it, and I just created a folder within that called Imports. And um, I'm going to save my Cinema 4D file out as test. If I open up the Unity scene right now, you can see that there's not a lot going on. So I'm going to save that as test, save. I should have saved it in there. Open up Unity. It's having a bit of a think. It's realized something news in the uh, folder. And I've got um, my test object in there. So as usual, these are import settings for your model. And then you've got your rig and your animations. So as you can see, it's brought brought in the animation at the bottom here. You can even play it, I think. Yeah, there you go. And the interesting thing about this is, usually with a dynamic IK chain, I think it used to be the case that you'd actually have to bake that bone animation down to keyframes. So there'd be a key for the position of every bone along the keyframe. I might be wrong about that, but um, I'm pretty sure that was the case. <laughs> Excuse me, um, but in Unity now that that um, that isn't the case anymore. So um, uh, right, let's have a look at the rig as well. Okay, so if I grab this and just dump it in our scene, uh, one thing to I should mention as well: the scale factor is one when you 
it should be 0.01 I've gone over that in a previous tutorial so we'll apply that okay so where's our object there it is there's our uh, I think I think we've got the camera set up so it's looking at it kind of so I'm just going to drag that across there and I'm going to play see what happens nothing absolutely nothing is happening go to our test object um, you know it's not very good is it so if we go to our animations we can see that it has imported an animation and and all the rest of it um, but I'm gonna go to the rig and just choose the animation type legacy for now just so we can get it working and then you apply that if we go back to the animations now um, uh, there's some other options I'm going to go over in a minute, but um, it should play in our viewport now. There you go. Lovely. So it's really nice that it's brought all of that dynamic stuff in, and um, we hadn't, we haven't had to bake that down uh, to keyframes. I'm just going to move the camera back so we can get all of it in. Let's play that again. Yeah, very good. Obviously, um, what we can do now is if I go into my, uh, where is it? If I go into the um, animations tab of our import, we can actually go into uh, the wrap mode for this clip, which is called main, and we can um, we can loop it. So it will, we'll apply that. And it will go through and when it gets to the end you'll see it jump bang it's looping again so that's just a really simple setup to show you how you can get bones into cinema uh, into unity and um, it's really actually quite great that that information can be taken in from the cinema 4d file instead of having to export as an FBX it will take it directly from the c4d file itself um, in the next tutorial I'm going to be talking about um, bringing other types of animation in um, say we had an undulating plane that you wanted to use of, as water um, this is actually problematic bringing that kind of animation into unity because unity at this point uh, I forget which version it is now I think it's unity 5.2.2 uh, still doesn't support uh, point level animation vertex animation but there is a way to bring it in using a plugin for Unity. Um, so we, we're going to take a look at that, that in the next tutorial. As always, don't forget to um, check out the uh, Digital Me website, digitalme.uk, and the Facebook page, um, Digital Me 3D. Um, that's at Facebook and the Vimeo page. All right, guys, cheers. Bye.